Welcome to It's Crochet O'Clock. My name is Stephanie and today we're going to be working on part three of the Rambling Roses Shawl Crochet Along by Pip and Poppycock. All of the information for this crochet along can be found in the description box below. You'll find the website for Pip and Poppycock where the written pattern is if you would like to follow along with the written pattern. You'll find F Pip and Poppycock's Facebook group where you can join up with other people who are working on this crochet along with you. For this project, I am working in Stylecraft Special DK Yarn, and I am working with my 7, not 7, my 4.5 millimeter crochet hook. This week, we are going to be squaring off our roses, we're going to be connecting them, and then we are going to be working on a finishing edge that will be used to attach to the main body of our shawl. We're not going to attach it to the shawl, but we're going to prep it to get ready to attach to the shawl this week. I do have one tip for you before we start on our journey for part three. This is all single crochets. So it, for me, when I work with a lot of single crochets, my eyes kind of start to cross. So what I did, because you have to square off 17 of these roses, is I grabbed a little notebook and I wrote round one, all the way down to round seven. And each time I would get finished with a round, I would just put a tick mark next to it. That way, if I had to get up, if something happened and I had to get up, I always knew exactly what round I was on and I knew what my stitch count was going to be by following the written pattern because Pip and Poppycock gives us our stitch count for each round and it made it a whole lot simpler when I had to come back to the project. So that is my tip for the week. Let's go ahead and get into squaring off these roses. To begin squaring off our roses, we are going to be working on the wrong side of the work, but before I flip over the work, I want to remind you that when we were making these petals, we had single crochets and then double crochets. So you're going to want to locate your single crochets. They look completely different, but they it can be a little bit deceiving because they got pulled up because of these double crochets. So just remember that they're at the end of the double crochets. We're going to be working in color C, so whatever your color C is, that's what you're going to want to put on your hook. And we are going to locate that single crochet. And just like we did down here when we were laying the foundations to build the petals, we're going to do kind of the same thing for this. You're going to locate the bottom of that single crochet. And you're going to put a standing single crochet there. It might be a bit tricky to get your hook into. This is why I was cautioning about crocheting tightly and also why I cautioned you against weaving in your ends up here because it makes this process a lot harder if you have to fight that. So there's our standing single crochet. Now we're just going to chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. Now you're going to hop over, find the next single crochet right there, and single crochet at the bottom of it. Just like we've done with the petals. Single crochet. You're going to do this a total of eight times all the way around. And when you get back over here, you are going to slip stitch to this first chain five space, and that will be your round one complete. I will see you again for round two. To begin round two, we are going to turn our work, and then we're going to chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. Now this chain five counts as a double crochet and a chain two, okay? In this next chain five space right here, we're going to place seven double crochets. There's one, two, three, four, five, 
six and seven. And then we're going to place seven more double crochets in this next chain five space. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then we're going to chain two. Now this chain two is going to count as our corner and we have just completed a side of squaring off. I know it doesn't look like it right now, but it is. So what you're going to do is you're going to repeat what we've done three more times. This last chain five here, you're only going to place six double crochets in it because you're going to fasten off to the third chain in this chain five. Remember this counts as a double crochet and a chain two. So this is our first corner right here technically. We just made our second one with this chain two. So you'll do seven double crochets, seven double crochets, chain two, and then just keep going all the way around. The only different one is this last one and that is six double crochets here and then you will fasten off, you'll slip stitch to the third, um, not fasten off, don't fasten off, You'll slip stitch to the third chain in this chain five, and then we will be ready for round three. To begin round three, we are going to chain one, and then we are going to place a single crochet in this corner space, that chain two space, single crochet, and then chain two, and single crochet in that same corner space. So we just made our new corner. Now we're going to single crochet over the next 14 stitches. Don't forget this first stitch right here because it's it might be a little bit hidden for you. So just don't forget that. There's one, two single crochet, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. And now we're back at another corner space. So we are going to single crochet, chain two, and then single crochet, all in that same corner space. And this corner is the exact same as this corner. So you're going to repeat that three more times and you are going to join to the top of this first single crochet, not the chain. Don't forget that that chain does not count as a stitch. You're going to slip stitch to the top of our first single crochet and we will meet back for round four. To begin round four, we are going to chain one. Again, that does not count as a stitch. We're going to place a single crochet in this same stitch right there. And that stitch would be the first part of our corner from the last round. Now we're at a corner, so we are going to single crochet and then chain two and then single crochet again in that same corner space. Now we are going to put 16 single crochets over the next 16 stitches. Very exciting, there's a lot of single crochets. Don't miss this hidden stitch, that counts. That hidden stitch is single crochet number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, and 16. Now we're at a corner, so that's single crochet, all in the same corner space, chain two, and then place another single crochet. And that corner is the same as this corner, so you're going to repeat that. Your corners are single crochet, chain two, single crochet, and then you have 16 single crochets going across. The only one that will be different is here at the end, you will have 15 single crochets because our first one was a single crochet before the corner. You're going to slip stitch to this first single crochet, and we will meet back here for round five. To begin round five, we are going to chain one. Again, that does not count as a stitch, but we are going to place a single crochet in that same stitch. Right there. So there's a single crochet and then single crochet in the next stitch. Now we are at a corner, so we are going to, same as the other corner, single crochet, chain two, and then single crochet in that same corner space. And now we are going to work 18 single crochets all the way across. Again, don't forget about that hidden stitch right there. That's important. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, 16, 17, and 18. Now we are at another corner, right there. So single crochet, chain two, single crochet, all in that same corner space. And that corner space is the exact same as this corner space over here. So you're going to repeat this three more times. You're gonna have two more sides here where you'll have 18 single crochets and then your corners. On this side, you'll have 16 single crochets because we worked two single crochets before our corner. You will slip stitch to the top of this first single crochet and then we will meet back for round six. To begin round six, we are gonna chain one and just like the previous rounds, we are going to place a single crochet in that same space as the chain one. And then we're going to single crochet in the next two stitches, making our way over to the corner. And the corner is the same as the other rounds. Single crochet in that corner space, chain two, and then single crochet in that same corner space once more. Now for this round we are going to work 20 single crochets. Again, don't forget about the hidden stitch. That's where your first single crochet is going to go. So there's one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 
11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Now we're at another corner space right there. So it's single crochet, chain two, single crochet, all in that same corner space. Just like previous rounds, this corner space is the same as this corner space. You're gonna repeat this three more times all the way around. On this side, when you get to the end, you are only going to have 17 stitches and you will slip stitch to the top of our first single crochet and then we will be ready for our final round, which is round seven of squaring off the roses. To begin round seven, we are going to chain one and then again, place a single crochet in that same space where that chain one came from. Now we're gonna place three single crochets in the next three stitches. There's one, two, and three. Now we're at the corner. The corner is the exact same as all of the previous ones. Single crochet, chain two, and then single crochet. Now for this side, you are going to single crochet in the next 22 stitches. Okay, I'm not going to do this with you. I've already been through five rounds of, of single crochets with you, so I think that, that you can do this on your own. Each side is 22 stitches plus your corners. When you get over here to this last side, you are going to have 18 single crochets before you get to your first single crochet here, and you will join to it and then you will fasten off and weave in your ends and we will be ready to join our squares after you do all of this 16 more times. I will see you then. Okay, we're ready to join. We have 17 squared off roses. Now we need to put them together. So to do that, I've already put together a whole bunch of them, but to do that, what you're going to do is you're going to take your roses and you are going to place them facing each other and even up your ends. Then you're going to grab your hook and we are still working in color C. So we're going to skip the chain spaces for it right now. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna hunt for this first single crochet and if you need to turn over the work to find it go ahead and and do that okay it's that stitch right there so we're going to insert our hook right there because we're going to make a standing single crochet but you're going to insert your hook into that first single crochet and then find the corresponding stitch on the next which is this one right there and insert your hook and you are simply going to make a standing single crochet. And now we are going to do the same thing all the way down. It's going to be 27, no, not 27, I'm sorry, 24 <laughs> single crochets. So there's two. If you put them next to each other, it's really super easy. If you line them up right, it's really, really easy and you can get this done in a GIF, no problem at all. So we're gonna be working 24 and I have lost count, but that's okay because I know where the chain space is. We're not working in the chain spaces right now
single crochets. There is a lot of single crochets in this week, but that's okay. The end result is worth it. We are getting close. Very, very, very close. Almost. I see the end in sight. <laughs> Just a couple more. Oop, oop. There we go. one. So now we're just going to fasten off fasten off there and there we are. We are joined. <laughs> so now you just need to weave in your end. So the way that these panels work is you're going to join eight squares for one panel and nine squares for the other panel. So when you get finished doing that, you'll have one panel of eight squares, one panel of nine squares. Then we're going to work on the finishing edge. So as soon as you pause the video, as soon as you finish with that, come back and we will work on the finishing edge. Now it's time to start working on our finishing edge so we can prep this to attach to the main body of our shawl. To begin this, you're going to find any chain two corner space and you are going to place a standing single crochet there. Now you're going to single crochet in the next 24 stitches. Don't forget about your hidden stitch. It's one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Now we're at a chain space. This was our corner. We're going to place one single crochet in this chain space. Okay? This next chain space over here in this corner, this is the same as this first stitch that we made in the corner. So you're just going to place a single crochet there there's one. Now you're going to work 24 single crochets again and you're going to rinse, lather, and repeat all the way down to the end. Now you're going to do this on both the 8 square panel and the 9 square panel, but you are only going to put this finishing edge on one side of this. This is the side that we are actually going to attach to the main body of the shawl and then on the other side, we are going to 
work the border to go around it to finish off the shawl. So your stitch count for the long panel will be 234 single crochets. That's the nine square panel. Your stitch count for the shorter eight square panel is going to be 208 single crochets. So after you get finished with that, then you are done with part three and you'll be ready to make leaves and vines for the next part. And here we are all connected and here is the finished edge all nice and pretty and straight which is what we want. Now we are not going to attach this to our shawl this week. We still have to get through some other steps next week in part four but you're done with part three. Congratulations. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and we will see you in our next video.